A lot of the things he's preached, I've been preaching now for years, and I'm not doing that to be braggadocious. I'm just telling you that as an apostle, our job is to wake up the church. That's what he's doing. That's how you will know a true apostle. And I encourage everyone to find them a true apostle if they can, to sit under, because the church is asleep as a whole. Not all, but most. They are. They're asleep. They're teaching uh, whatever denominational structure they belong to. That's what they're teaching. They're all about growing the church. They're not about the kingdom. Most of them don't even understand the kingdom. And the kingdom is what Jesus preached. Nothing but. So the only people you're going to find that are really going to teach the kingdom, I mean teach the reality of the kingdom, not just mention the word when it comes up in scriptures, but teach the reality and the depth of it is an apostle. That's where we're at in this last day time frame. We're still working our way out of the church dispensation of time into the kingdom dispensation of time. And apostolic ministry seems to be the only ministry that God's using to do that. I'm not saying that there aren't others that can't teach, but most are asleep. And Jesus himself said he's going to come like a thief in the night. There'll be those who'll be caught unaware. Who are they? The church. The sinner's already going to be caught unaware. That's not no question to that. That's a no-brainer. So he's talking to the church. I could see, as an apostle, a fellow apostle, I could see his frustration. That's why I showed this video that I picked to show him. I can see his frustration because this isn't the first time he's taught that, and he even made kind of a, a remark toward that. Or, But like me, he's frustrated because you try to tell these people this, and they can't get it, most of them. They can't get it. Oh, they want to go back to their dead, dry, do-nothing, unbiblical-type church. We've had them. First of all, they come in and try to change our church by saying, well, you're not like the church down the street. I'm sure he's gone through the same thing. I don't think he has his own church. He has churches he preaches at, but he really has his own ministry. But I'm sure there's people that come in and try to change it. We have somebody recently this week that wants to change what we're doing. It's not going to happen, folks. You saw another apostle who's wired to do what he says uh, what Jesus tells them to do. That's it. I'm wired the same. I'm not comparing them, you know, to me, him, to me. I'm just saying, because there's more like us. We're wired to be apostles, and we cannot be a pastor. We cannot settle for less. Now, pastors have their place. They are mentioned one time in the New Testament, but apostles are mentioned numerous times, but they do have their one mention. So those who want to spend the rest of their life sitting under a pastor, I can already warn you, you're not going to get the depth of the kingdom. Oh, you'll get some scripture, you'll get some teachings, but see, the difference is it's cognitive. It's not spirit-led from, uh, from the throne room. And that's where we're at today. If the church doesn't become spirit-led directly from the throne room, they are going to be among those he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. The church. You got to remember when Jesus said that, these are the people who say, Oh, we've done miracles. We even cast out demons in your name and everything. He said, Depart from me. I never knew you. You know another way of explaining that? Depart from me. You did not, uh, you are not part of God. You're not part of the throne room. You do not listen to the throne room. All you're doing is what you want to do, and you're using my name to do it. I didn't know you. Depart from me. That's where we're at, folks. That's how dangerous this stuff is. There's going to be millions of people that are thinking they're saved, and I've said this many times, and they're going to find out they're not. Then it's too late. You can't go back. It's etched in stone. Now, most Christians, and I, I could experience his frustration a little bit as well in this, that most Christians live in the present. I see them all the time. I'm probably looking at some right now. You live in the present. The present is more important to you than your connection with God, okay? Living in the present is not going to get you into the kingdom. 
They are so involved in living in the present, which means they're living for themselves. They're not doing what he just taught. Uh, Paul did, you know, living uh, to live as Christ and to die as gain. They have. They don't even have that concept. They're living in the present, and the future now is going to come upon them. They're living in the church world, if you will, and the kingdom's going to come upon you. Let me tell you, the kingdom, when it comes, does not encompass every uh, organization that calls themselves a church. You just said it yourself. I, you know, depart from me. Oh, yeah, we did this and that and that. And others, we're part of the church. Depart from me. I never knew you. That's where we're at. So, again, um, I just want to encourage you to wake up. Now, I'm speaking to whoever would hear this uh, later as a, uh, over Facebook or something. Wake up and get with what God is doing today. Not what he did yesterday. He's already done it. Get with what he's doing today. Now, most preachers in our area, I know for a fact, do not have a clue what he's doing today. That's why our church is pretty much small. Because no one wants a clue of what he's doing today. Now, many of these will be those he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. That's why the wide gate, uh, the wide road to destruction is so wide. And the narrow gate, you know what the narrow gate is? That's the kingdom gate. If you don't know where that gate is, you can't get into the kingdom. And that's the job of apostles to teach, which means you're going to be rejected. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be talked about. You're going to have people say, oh, he doesn't even hear the Holy Spirit. Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, he's all about himself. I mean, I've heard them all, believe me. But that's the price you pay. So.